What's up everyone? How's it going? Welcome once again to this week's sterling episode of the internet's finest trawl through the gutters, the hellscape known as the BBC website. And it's all black, as usual. Um, apparently we, inst we, uh, we copied uh, the Americans and stuck Black History Month in in the UK. Uh, which makes me laugh because the whole reason the Americans have it is because they've obviously got this long, rich history of black culture, black inventors, black scientists, black writers. You know, they've got this rich history from hundreds of years of contributions to the American project. From more contemporary figures like Martin Luther King to way back to the likes of Harriet Tubman you know, set over a century ago. Um, but unfortunately, in the UK, we don't really have that, do we? Because I know this is gonna shock you if you're under the age of about 30, but in 1945, the UK was one of the most homogenous societies on planet Earth. It was like Japan. It was 99.999% homogenous white dudes. So we're sort of stuck for uh we're stuck for icons aren't we because we haven't got hundreds of years of history to look at so what have we gone with don't worry boys and girls we've got a bad 80s comedian <laughs> lenny henry you know they might have like martin luther king and fucking the bloke who invented peanut butter uh we've got lenny henry so you know of course we should be important black history month we've got loads of good ones to choose from <laughs> Good ones to choose from, like you like your fucking ordering shoes off eBay. Um, it is quite tragic, isn't it, that in the UK we've imported this toxic, race-based, fucking categorical culture off them. It's terrible, terrible. We used to just have British history. We don't call people African British. We just call them British. We don't care. We don't care. We never have cared. But in 2020, because of all this progress. Apparently, thanks to all this wonderful progress, now we're like fucking segregating people. <laughs> it's, it's madness. It's madness. So let's jump right into it. Honestly, the BBC today, it really is a swamp. It's just race-based, like everything. Look at this one. James Hope's Lake has make the Bryan family proud. I'll tell you what. Maybe I'm just being arrogant because I'm British by birth and I'm not really that interested in basketball. But I think if my husband, if I was a black lady married to a man and he ploughed into a mountain with my daughter, I don't think his former colleagues winning a game of basketball, I don't think that I'd have me jumping for fucking joy, frankly. I think I'd have more important things to worry about. But... LeBron James, apparently he's a celebrity in England now, right? He must be, because that's all you see on the fucking BBC homepage, yeah? Apparently in the, in Britain, we've had black people living in Britain for fucking thousands of years. Um, everybody fucking loves basketball, and everyone's mega interested in who LeBron fucking James is. Apparently so. Apparently this is the case. Oh yeah, and ploughing into a mountain with your daughter. Eh, fuck it. As long as as long as your your living colleagues win their next basketball game, you you will last will be fucking over the moon. It's important basketball. It's important. And there's tons of shit like this. How a black science pioneer was failed. Oh god, prejudice. It's awful. Britain. If if you're a 23 year old Englishman, you should fucking hang your head in shame that a bunch of foreigners had some people picking cotton hundreds of years ago when everyone was basically slaves because it was legal and it had been for thousands of fucking years. Uh, you know, that's the thing that knows with these young people. They do honestly seem to think that slavery was invented by like fucking George Washington. Like he just, he just came up with it on a whim. Like everyone else was free and easy back in the 14th century. Yeah. The pyramids, like I said, the pyramids were built by a LGBT unionized workforce, right? They all got official breaks and they had full dental and medical. And uh, it was none, none of that, none of that. It was all invented by George Washington, the bastard. Ottoman Empire, no, don't talk about the Ottoman Empire. No, that, that wasn't a thing, that wasn't a thing. You've been misled by those cishet patriarchal scum that run the British national curriculum, right? There's no such thing as the Ottoman Empire. 
There was the LGBT Ottoman Collective, right? The Ottoman Cooperative. And they work together to fix problems like microaggressions. <laughs> microaggressions. They did, yeah. People getting stabbed in the face off, off the back of an elephant, right? Or ran through with a fucking gladius. And they, they, no, that's not, that's bollocks that. That's just off the TV. They were really worrying about microaggressions in the Middle Ages. <laughs> it's mental. Mental. Every fucking story. What determines our body image? Uh, whether or not you've got a fat ass, probably. Let's have a look. There is an intimate link between how we feel and how we look. Well, no fucking shit. If you've got a body like a bin liner full of coleslaw, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking you're going to be a little bit insecure, aren't you? Maybe, the, the main guy was if everything's linked, because these commies just practice this annoying, unending tidal wave of rhetoric from Marxist professors who talk about how everything's a social fucking construct right everything's a social construct everything but what about the fact that there might even be biological reasons for why you'd feel uncomfortable think about that like if you're morbidly obese you don't live very long if you're morbidly obese your heart might explode on a whim if you're morbidly obese you get diabetes and cancer and shit like that so maybe there's some sort of unconscious triggers in your brain saying to you listen fucking buffalo ass go for a jog because <laughs> it's not good for you Maybe on some monkey level we know. Maybe. It's, it's not everything isn't a social construct. Some of it is innate in a biological species that is prone to health risks if they do stupid things like inventing motorcycles. Right, there's something. That's why you get adrenaline and fear because our little weak skeletal system was perfectly made for jogging around the jungle and, you know, maybe banging into a tree at 15 miles an hour. And then the reason if you get on a fucking CBR 900 and it goes 230 miles an hour. The reason you get like a thrill, a strange rush in your brain from it is not because of a social construct, right? It's not because the bike's performing a micro or a macro aggression. <laughs> it's because humans could run into trees when the fastest they could go was 15 miles an hour. Now we've invented things that can make us run into trees at 200 miles an hour. And when you do that, your entire body will be mashed to pulp, <laughs> right? So there's something in us. We just know when something's a bit off, don't we? We know the monkey knows. And I think the monkey knows when something's up. That's why on some innate level, when you are a human hippopotamus, a bipedal fucking sack of redundant protoplasm like some of the people you see rolling around the town centres nowadays. I think that's why you feel weird, you feel insecure, because we know. I don't believe it's all just down to conditioning. Like, if we hadn't been conditioned, we'd all love looking at Diane Abbott's big blamongy ass. We just... I don't believe it. I think the monkey likes to look at someone who's lean and healthy. Some part of your subconscious. I've always been into women that look like they can run. My wife's very slim. She can run. Some part of my chimp brain looks at her and goes, if she can't climb up a mountain and run away from a predator, maybe she wouldn't be very useful for looking after the children. Why don't we think of that? Instead of just blaming everything on a fucking microaggression or the patriarchy. Nobody think, no, or is that just me? I went on a bit of a tirade there. Let's just carry on. In one to one, Helen Moore explores this link. What was I talking about again? Oh yeah, how insecurities make us feel low or anxious. Um, and the emotive decisions we make in relation to statement haircuts, tattoos and physical fitness. They're so fucking myopic, aren't they? So the last one really matters, physical fitness. Because that affects your body in this way. Haircuts and tattoos. Yeah, that's all I want to talk about. Because they all have daft fucking hair. And they all have stupid fucking tattoos. And I'm not one to gob off about tattoos, me. Because look, I've got a Middlesbrough uh, football club tattoo. Which I got when I was a teenager. Not the brightest thing I've ever done. Um, it was a nice deep vivid red when I was young. Now it looks like some sort of gay pink fucking lion. Like it's a Leo the homosexual lion. Um, I'm not normally one to slag off tattoos. For the obvious... But um, they do look a bit shit, don't they? Especially when you're completely covered in them. Like I said, look at her. You wouldn't know whether to fuck her or read her. Well, I know I wouldn't want to fuck her because she's got a fucking long head. Like a horse with a bandana on. And they've always got nose piercings. I fucking hate them as well. Anyway, 
Don't touch my air. Lockdown airs come to mean many different things to different people. God. Again, it's just narcissism and myopic bullshit. Who cares? This hairdresser gave herself a rainbow fringe. Look, mummy looks like a My Little Pony. You're fucking 40. Get a grip. Irish Nigerian Emma Dabiri's Don't Touch My Hair book said for so long black people had to conform to Caucasian beauty standards. No, that isn't. Do what you fucking like. This is what I'm telling you. They make this shit up. They make this shit up because they want to be special and they want to make everything about them. They didn't. They didn't have to do that. I've seen movies from the fucking 60s and the 70s and the women had big fucking afros and the men had dreadlocks. It was Bob Marley fucking conforming to Caucasian beauty standards. They didn't have to conform. They didn't. You just want to make out like as in, oh yeah, gaining momentum since 2010. All right, so you started this. That's what this is all about. Martin Luther King and all the fuckers in the civil rights movement, they did all the heavy lifting. And now, same as I've said dozens of times, these little fucking 23-year-old piss ants who've never had any problems in their life at all, they want to pretend that they did all the work. Yeah. 20, 2009, fucking hell, that people were treated like dogs. But we came along in 2010 and we fixed everything. You didn't. You privileged, spoiled, whiny little bitch. You didn't do anything. You didn't do anything. Bob Marley didn't have a fucking ball cut, did he? He didn't. He didn't have a council fucking hairdo like I did in the fucking 80s. <laughs> so stop talking shit. Look. Individuals are facing discriminatory measures when they are unable to make their hair conform to regulations. No, they aren't. No, they aren't. They weren't in the 60s, they weren't in the 70s, they weren't in the 80s. Don't tell me they're doing it now. When you, when you fuckers are just constantly getting everything through at you. When everyone's constantly whining and crying about how, how much more they can do for fucking the BME community. When, as we all know, we've seen the numbers. There's only one group getting totally fucked dry. <laughs> by the state and it ain't black women it ain't negative attention from tattoos Ooh, some strangers have grabbed her arms or touched her to look at her tattoos oh it's awful it's ill-conceived and cre awful awful yeah other generations are working 70 hour a week in the fucking till in the fields now lou hopper she's worrying about people gawping at her because of things that she put on her on purpose, so people would go out at her. Poor bastard. Getting older, as an extension of our personality, the way we present ourselves develops as we do. And this can continue for our whole lives. What's she going to say? Ah, oh, they didn't get old in the old days, no. In, in, in the 18th century, you used to be beautiful until you were 35, and then you'd just fucking expire voluntarily. Just fucking drop down dead in the middle of the street and pass your soul up to the fucking gods. What a load of shit. An 86 year old hair who's got her hair dyed turquoise. Ha ha. It's great. She's extremely clever and articulate. So there you go. There you go. Talking about low, low standards nowadays. None of the fucking doctors are going to medical school anymore. You just have to fucking, you just have to get a few ticks in the box. You just have to be diverse. You're hired. Fuck. Fuck doing any work. Well, all you have to do if you really want to be extremely clever and articulate now is give yourself some fucking turquoise hair. Done. Fuck university. Don't need to read any long books. Shakespeare. Pfft. Too much work. Die your fucking hair. Sorted. What a pile of shite. And look. Everything. More from Radio 4. Body shape. Body image. Weight loss. Look at who tattoos. Amazing. Fuck off. Everything you need to know about tattoos. Shut the fuck up. Did, did, you, did you invent them as well? Did you? I've only been doing them since 2010. Yeah, ask my dad. He's got a fucking Borstal one on his ass. <laughs> what a pile of shit. Here's some serious news. Macron vows to fight Islamic separatism. Fucking hell. Uh, pay attention, boys, because I think this is coming our way very fucking soon. Uh, he's announced plans for tougher laws to tackle what he called Islamist separatism and defend secular values. In a keenly awaited speech, Mr. Macron said a minority of the six million Muslims were in danger of forming a counter society. Oh, really? Uh, or just a slight danger of that? How come I've been reading about it for over 10 years then? How come Camp of the Fucking Saints was written in like, what, 1975 or something? It's been talked about for years. 
Because when you get a big enough number of people that refuse to assimilate, once they get to a certain point, they do make a fucking count in society. A fifth column. I've been reading about this for decades. So don't tell me it's, oh, it's all of a sudden it's a danger. We've known about it for decades. The frogs have done fuck all about it. Again, they want to blame everybody else. Oh, it's a new thing. No, I don't want nothing to do with me. I just noticed it. Fuck off. Stricter oversight of schooling and control over foreign funding of mosques. Good idea. Instantly accused of repressing Islam in France. Well, France isn't an Islamic country. Said the country has the largest population of Muslims in Western Europe. And many complain the authorities use secularism to target them. If it's secularism, how can that specifically target anyone? Secularism. It's fucking equal across the board. Measures announced by the parliament include stricter monitoring of sports organisations so they don't become a front for Islamist teaching. Seems perfectly logical. And then the system of imams being sent to France from abroad. Seems perfectly fucking reasonable. Improved oversight of the financing of mosques. Well, definitely, because we found fucking AK-47s under a bastard mosque in London, didn't we? And homeschooling restricted. Yeah, perfectly reasonable. So I'm sure that will get shut down in flames. He'll get called a Nazi and they'll install a fucking Ayatollah instead. <laughs> Marvellous. Marvellous. Good enough for him. Good enough for him. France, fucking, they haven't got the brains they were born with. They deserve everything we get. Let's have a look at this Miss Genius. How a brilliant biologist was failed by science. Science has failed us all. Roger Young's brilliance made her the first black woman in the US to hold a doctorate. Why is she called Roger? That's a bit weird, isn't it? Although, not as weird as some of the names you see these days, so fuck it. Roger, I'd take Roger over fucking Shara Nana Nana Nan, or whatever the fuck it was. Elizabeth Equa. My missus said she's seen a woman in a doctor's and it said L, line, A, and the nurse said like, La, La, and the woman said, No, it's not silent, she's Ladasha. Apparently, she swears that is a true story. <laughs> Roger. Yeah, well, I'll take Roger. I'll take Roger. She said, aiming law is a crime. She earned a master's degree. She was the first black woman to publish a paper in the prestigious journal Science. Um, and she was called a real genius in zoology. She brought new ground as the first black woman in the fraternity for scientists and engineers. Blah, blah, blah. She did loads of good stuff. So where's the where's the bad bit? Where's the bad bit? She says she, she got she did great and she brought new heights and she worked every fucking way she wanted to. And amazing. It was remarkable that a black woman was able to so she did do it. So where's the bit that she got failed then? She had to battle against forces that sought to make her invisible and silent, but they didn't. Keep telling me it was unusual, but she did it anyway. Graduated, got a master's degree, promoted to faculty. Where, where's the where's the bad stuff? Within one year, she had a paper published, but she still finished a PhD under zoologist at Pennsylvania. Co-authored two papers with Lewis Heilbrunn. Then she became an activist. I'm not. I don't get it. I don't get it. Why did why did I put this on there? Failed by science. Seems like she did all right to me. <laughs> so there's another non-story. Cheers, BBC. NFL, Fritz Pollard, let's talk about another black guy, cause, you know, an American dude who's got nothing to do with England. Uh, yeah, and everyone in England's mega interested in American football, aren't they? Uh, no, they fucking aren't. It's just bollocks, isn't it? Absolute bollocks. Where's some proper news? Oh, there we go, Brexit. They've agreed the important of finding a trade deal. Alright, so they've agreed it's fucking important, but are they doing one? <laughs> no. <laughs> Progress has been made, but significant gaps remain. That's not news. Is there any news on this fucking website this week? They agree it's important. <laughs> well, I think we all agree it's important. Not really a story, though, is it? Tell us, what's happened? N nothing, we just think it's important. All right, cheers then. If I was the reporter there, I'd be in my microphone out. I'd be like, are you taking the fucking piss out of me? Horace, are you pulling my fucking pisser? Get back in that office and fucking sort something out, you useless scruffy... Tech, your fucking scraggy sack of rats, German bird, back inside that fucking office and do some work, you useless, posh twat. Yeah, that's what you should be saying, reporters. Get some work done. Fuck me. Oh, I'm not even clicking on that. Look, what sex can teach us about the past? You knew. 
you knew the first thing that the, you would see is two hairy ass blokes, didn't you? What sex can teach us about the past? I don't want to learn what those two hairy naked men want to teach me. Thanks very much. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to know. I'm, I've, I've seen enough cock. I was a Royal Marine for 10 years. I was always showering with large groups of men. I have seen enough cock to last me a lifetime. I don't even want to click on the BBC's What Sex Can Teach Us About The Past story. Thank you very much. Taxpayer funded sausage party. Right. It's, I, I don't want to see it. I think I'll have to cut this short, boys and girls. There is no fucking work. There's no news on here this week. It's just Trump and how good's black America. It's got nothing to do with England. Yeah, not a story, not a story. Some woman got killed. North of England's been locked up. I've already talked about that. I've made my fucking feelings very clear. Oh, fuck off. COVID. <laughs> Dominic Raab said t the COVID nearly took the... <laughs> took the life of the Prime Minister. Fucking bollocks. Bollocks. If there's one thing we can categorically know now, I'll end on this one. It's that there's no fucking way that it nearly killed Boris Johnson. Right? No fucking way. You don't even have to be a COVID sceptic. Like, I'm sceptical. I think they've overplayed it because they don't want to admit they were wrong. Politicians never apologise, never admit they were wrong. So they're just never going to. They're just going to have to keep all telling us that it's the worst thing ever for fucking the next 10 years because they'll never admit it. They'll never just hold their hands up and say, well, Sweden's not on fire. There isn't fucking bodies piling up over there. It seems to be working fine. So the kids should be in school. They can't bring themselves to do it. So they're stuck in a lie. It's like too big to fail with the F-35. It, it's a lie. They have to keep going now. They can never admit they were wrong because then they have to admit that they've fucked the economy for nine months. So now they just have to keep lying. They have to keep lying until the fucking stars burn cold. But you think of this logically. They told us all these different reasons why your mortality rate might be high. The two chief ones is being really old and being morbidly obese. Donald Trump is both of those things and no one seems to be concerned for his health. So don't tell me that a bloke's like, what? what is he, in his early 50s? Don't tell me he is, oh fuck it, I was that close to death. When we all know for a fact Trump's going to shrug it off. Do you know the amount of people I know whose fucking grandparents have had it? The amount of messages I've had of people who said, oh my fucking granny had it, she's 88 and she's diabetic. But she was alright, she said she just had a bit of a cold for a fucking week. She said she just had a bit of a runny nose. Like it's, don't, don't talk shit, Rab. Fucking Rab. Rab C fucking Nesbitt. Do you remember Rab C Nesbitt? He's got more sense than Dominic fucking Rab. Jesus wept. What a load of shit. Dominic, you are a lying, light bulb headed fucking dickhead. I've had it. I've had it for this week. There's no fuck it. There's no real news on there this week, folks. No real news. Nothing about Brexit. No, nah, we've got fucking nowhere. Nowhere with coronavirus. Get back in your houses, you cunt. It's been nearly a year, but we've made no progress. You're all going to die. You're all going to die. So get back in your fucking basements. And um, if you're black, you're fucking winner. Yeah, it's good for you. Don't, I don't see the point. Uh, no real news. American news and virus, fake virus news, and that's about it. Nothing, nothing interesting. Nothing anybody with any sense cares about. Fuck it, I've had enough. If you're from Alabama and you're mega interested in black history, well, check the BBC website out. It's fucking great. If you're English, you get that. Look, that you can see we're scraping the bottom of the fucking barrel because <laughs> we've got no, no one to pick from. We've got fucking Lenny Henry. That's it. We haven't got any Martin Luther King Juniors. We've got Lenny fucking Henry. A bloke of told gags in the 80s. That, of course it's not news. We're scraping the fucking barrel because we, we've only got 50 years of history to look at. <laughs> it's a terrible idea. Yeah, anyway, that's it. That's it for this week, folks. I'll, uh, I guess I'll do some, I might do some live tomorrow. Fuck it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Cheers.